Spoonsters, it's me, Spoon, and you found your way to the Art the Fork YouTube channel. I have a little bit of a flip through here for you today. Now, most of the time on YouTube, when someone says they're doing a flip through and they're a member of the mixed media community, they mean that they're going to flip through their art journal, showing you completed pages while they talk about it a little bit. That's essentially what I'm doing here, but instead of flipping through my art journal, I'm going to be going through some photos I found of prior canvases that I've done. The reason we're going to be going through old photos is because most of these pieces, if not all of them, now live in a different home. Um, so this pe first piece we have here uh, didn't ever really get a title. I've always just called her the girl. And um, the texture is just crumpled up aluminum foil that I um, glued down to the canvas here and there and then gessoed over. And then I applied um, glazes made with glazing medium and then several different paints from the Peebo line of mixed media paints. I believe it's Peebo. I don't have the canvas anymore and it's been a long time since I did it so I'm not exactly sure of the full supply list. But anyway, I painted it, um, wiped a bit of it away so you could still see some of the aluminum foil, and then clear gessoed over all of that to make sure everything stayed down. Now this was the first time I'd ever used clear gesso, and yes, clear gesso dries, as it says, clear, but if you put it on really heavy, which I inadvertently did, it does give everything kind of a hazy, toned down quality. It ended up working for this piece, though I eventually started to like it. So then I made the image um, using a variety of images for inspiration. Um, she's a girl in an evening dress uh, without her head. And the um, inspiration for this piece really came from that old story out of, what was it, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, where the woman always wears a ribbon around her neck. And her husband eventually takes it off and her head falls off. I will have to find the story and link to it in the description down below. Because I don't really remember which volume of scary stories it was in. Or even who wrote those books at this point. But I loved them when I was a kid. And I just got this weird idea for this piece. And this is what came out of it. So I drew the image using again multiple source images on my light box. And then colored it with Copics. I'm still, even now, like two or three years later, learning how to use Copics correctly. So some of my shading is sometimes a little off, even more so in this piece, but I like her a lot. Um, so then I adhered all that down, took a piece of ribbon that coordinated with the dress from my stash, um, glued it down, tied it in a bow, and then untied the bow to give it that sort of... Um, look and then I even ended up because I wanted her hands to be grasping at the ribbon trying to find her head and catch it and whatnot I ended up after I had bent it and tied it and untied it gluing it down loosely to her hands um and then down there at the bottom it says oh no I've come undone uh which I just printed on regular cardstock and then painted over um, with some leftover purple I had in glazing medium. Or I might have used the marker over top of it. I probably used the marker now that I think about it. Um, this next, next piece I have here, excuse me, actually even has my real name on it. Uh, because this is some pictures from an art show I did recently. Um, this particular art show was really cool. It was specifically for people who identify themselves as disabled didn't really matter what disability you had, you just needed to identify as having a disability. And it was juried. It was my first ever juried art show, which means that I submitted a couple of paintings to them. Um, their judges took a look at it and decided whether they wanted it in the show or not. And then um, awards were given at the show. This actually was a runner-up, but it was a great piece and I wanted to include it. So... The way I got this texture was I added paint to shaving cream on top of a canvas, uh, marbled around that shaving cream, um, and then left it to dry. Um, I just realized that came out kind of twisted around. So I put shaving cream down with paint in it, marbled it, 
and then ran the canvas through the shaving cream. Left the shaving cream on the canvas to sit and dry. Um, and when it dries, it shrinks down some. It's not quite as stiff as a modeling face. But it creates this really great marbled background and a little bit of texture. So then I took a stencil and stenciled through that with paint onto the cool texture I had. And I did have to let the shaving cream dry. It took about three days. You can't heat set it. You have to leave it set. And the more shaving cream you have on, the higher it'll be after it's dried. But it loses probably about 60% of its volume as it's drying. So then, you know, I stenciled on um, the uh, tree branches. And then the image itself is just a die cut. Um, the die cut itself is using a die made by Tim Holtz. I can't remember the name of it now, but it's a, it's a big die made by Sizzix. And then um, just ribbon around the edge. And I, again, printed this out on my computer in... Uh, regular on regular cardstock rather and then distressed it and glazed over it with some paint it says he who is conceived in a cage yearns for the cage and for me this piece was just really talking about being an artist I don't see three-dimensional space um, everything kind of looks flat to me when you're dealing with three dimensions like so if I go to see a 3d movie for example even if I'm wearing the glasses it pretty much looks like a regular movie for me. Uh, I have to use some cheats for figuring out where my car is in space when I'm driving, that kind of thing. Um, so I was always, you know, just under the impression that I couldn't make art because I couldn't draw freehand. And then I met a friend who did a lot of mixed media and she said, just play. So I did. And through playing around and things like that and watching other artists on YouTube, I figured out that a lot of people don't draw at all, but they make amazing art. They use collage, they do altered images, that kind of thing. And so this was just about that. And the reason the quote says he is who he who is conceived in a cage yearns for the cage is because when I started to call myself an artist and submit work to art shows and things like that, I was really uncomfortable with it. I felt like a poser or somebody who didn't have any business doing what I was doing and it sort of um, made me wish that I hadn't even started kind of because it was more comfortable to identify myself in a way that everybody else also would identify me as. It was kind of really uncomfortable to go against that grain that I'd grown up in of not being capable. So that's how this piece came about. This next one is really simple and I just included it in the flip through because I wanted to show what my stuff looked like as a bare bones beginner. This was the second canvas I had ever made in my life. I put the paint on with my fingers and then ran a baby wipe over it to smooth it out a little bit. It's supposed to be a sunset, and I guess I kind of achieved that, but, you know, there's random bits of paint everywhere, nothing's clean, there's fingerprints in it, that kind of thing. The um, image is just a piece I cut out of some scrapbook paper. Um, all my stamping has the ghost lines around it because I didn't really know how to stamp appropriately without um, getting ink where it wasn't supposed to be. But I still love this piece. It's, you know, hanging up in my living room, actually. Um, and I just, again, wanted to include this because it doesn't have to be complicated or have 50,000 steps or all the most expensive, you know, mediums to be considered mixed media art. If you put it down on the page, it's art. We can sit and argue about what's good art versus what's not good art, but I don't think any of that really matters. Um, you just sit down at your studio, in your workspace, in my case it's a studio, but it could be your kitchen table or your car while you're waiting for your kids to 
um, pick them up after school or whatever. But you sit wherever you're working and just do your best to make your ideas come out on the page. And they may not ever even really look like what you thought of either. I guarantee you that when I thought this piece up, I wasn't thinking it would look like this. But it's still a valid piece. That's why I included this. So this next one is really simple. But I included it because all of that color is actually homemade spray that I made using Rit dye. I had some leftover Rit dye from helping a friend's kid with a Girl Scout project. And I had been watching YouTube videos about Dilution sprays because I made this piece right after Dilutions came out. And I didn't have the money for them, but I really wanted to try the work. So I used what I had. It's um, a really simple mixture. Uh, I can definitely put up a video about how to make them. If you'd like, just, you know, leave me a comment and I'll put that up for you. But, uh, you know, I sprayed through a... I think it was an airbrush stencil that uh, an ex-boyfriend of mine had but I did this um, graveyard here and you know I put it down once and it didn't really work out so I flipped the canvas and did it again and used the other for texture um, and all of that is just the writ dye that I sprayed down and then mopped up with a paper towel uh, the rose is actually modeling paste with a little bit of paint mixed in through a stencil and then the clock, which unfortunately the hands don't move independently, so the time isn't any specific time, it just was the time I put down, was actually on a completed art journal page that I bought at, not art journal, rather, scrapbook page that I got at Michael's. Um, it's meant for you to buy it, put your photos in, and slap it in your scrapbook and you're done. And, and I just now started scrapbooking, believe it or not. But I, you know, have always bought these completed quote-unquote scrapbook pages and then cut them apart for ephemera. So that's where I got that clock. Um, and so on to this page. Sorry, I keep calling them pages, but they're not. They're canvases. This is actually artboard, so it's thinner. But this is, again, featuring my favorite technique of crumpling up aluminum foil and gluing it down for texture. And then the colors are all paint except for the black lines. That's black iridescent India ink. I think it's actually by FW brand. So it's artist ink, not technically India ink. But it's, it's a similar process. It comes with a little dripper top. And so I dripped dots of the pearlescent ink on, sprayed them with water so they would run. And that's how I created that. Now, this was coming out when everybody was um, doing those really cool crayon art where they would glue the crayons to the canvas and then melt them. I didn't want to make that big of a mess because I live in an apartment. And, it, yeah, I just didn't want to go there. But I liked the look. So this was my interpretation of that look. I got the silhouette off of Google and then just used embossing powder and heat embossed on top of it. And then glued it down. In fact, you can see my uh, heat tool in the corner of the photo there. This one is something that I included because I wanted to show you you can do mixed media anywhere. This I actually did in the hospital. I was recovering from an illness. I just uh, went into the rec room there. Borrowed what paint I could find. Excuse me. I thought I turned that off. Um, what paint I could find in a couple of magazines and a coloring page and made this piece. It says, uh, work hard, stay strong, make them wonder how you do it. Um, and I just really like this piece. Um, mostly because it makes me feel like MacGyver every time I look at it. So I colored this piece with just regular markers that they had. And, you know, uh, there's nothing really special here, but this is still a great piece of art. My point being, you can make art out of anything that you have. And this last one here is called uh, Love Transforms. Um, it is a small canvas that I did for some friends. Uh, 
um, as kind of a LGBT pride piece. Um, this was done before um, gay marriage was legalized, or as I like to call it, just marriage. But uh, this was actually an altered image. The original image, the two girls, it wasn't colored, and the two girls were actually facing away from each other and connected at the hair. And so I colored them, cut them out, um, repositioned them so that they were kissing. Uh, they have vellum behind their eyes. Uh, the border is done with a embossing folder that makes tickets appear on your cardstock, and I just emboss them, cut them into strips, rip them apart, and distress them with the stress ink. Um, and then the title of the page is just written there with some stickers I got at Michael's. Um, and what I ended up having to do, um, to position that way is I had to cut slits in their mouth and actually position their, um, so I could position their lips behind and in front of each other. Um, I really love this piece. I've toyed with doing a whole series of them, but haven't been able to quite make the girls look like I want them to since then. Uh, sometimes great pieces are kind of lightning in a bottle. Uh, so that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this little flip through and walk down memory lane with me. I do also have um, some old photos of art journal pages that are strewn across several um, journals. Some of which are still at my parents, some are here. There's kind of art journals anywhere in the world that I've ever been, there's an art journal. Um, but if you'd like to see some more of my work, I can definitely put together a flip through of those pages. I may do it anyway, even if no one requests it, just because this is so much fun. Thank you for visiting. I hope you've gotten a lot of inspiration out of what I've done. If you'd like to see more, please let me know in the comment section. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of the great content from Art the Fork. We post new videos every Monday and Thursday, with the occasional bonus video like this one thrown in. Uh, we post anything and everything that'll help you do the art. Uh, have a great day, and we hope to see you again soon.